I'm not exactly sure what I want to talk about today. Something about Rise of Skywalker, something about the toxicity of the Star Wars fans, something about just movie reviews and YouTube in general, I guess. And I think, much like Disney's Star Wars saga, it's all going to come together really well by the end. Let's start the rant. I saw the new Star Wars movie a few days ago. I enjoyed it quite a bit, did a review, a little car said review on it, and now I want to break down some of the spoilery stuff and just kind of uh, talk about what I thought about the, the franchise as a whole. Those of you that aren't new to this channel know that I, like The Force Awakens, absolutely despise The Last Jedi from a storytelling perspective. And here we are at the, the, the final countdown, the, the ninth installment of this disaster that has been Star Wars. And uh, I, thought it was, I thought it was entertaining, I thought it was fun, didn't make any sense. Fine. I'm okay with that. I, I don't like that many Star Wars movies. I, I like the original three. And going back and watching Return of the Jedi now, that's even kind of kind of lame in comparison to the other two. Um, the prequels are just nothing to me. I, I don't care at all about them. If you, the thing is, we have different generations of people watching these. So kids, kids growing up, you know, after the initial series, might have started with the prequels. So that's Star Wars to them. That's what they know. Unfortunately, movies are subjective. Uh, the fact that Lucas made six movies and three of them are completely different, vastly different than the three that came before, is quite telling. It's, it's, it's quite interesting where his head was at during that time. And then, you know, we jump another 30 years and we have a different take on things. You know, a lot of people give J.J. crap, rightfully so, for just basically retelling A New Hope again. They, he, he Home Alone 2'd it. He, he did the same movie over um, with different characters, some of the same characters. I, I thought that was fine. You know, as someone who didn't care for the other ones, the prequels, I, I was like, okay, we're back. We're back to, to square one. We're, we're starting this over. It looks like Star Wars is having fun. It's that pulpy, kind of campy, you know, cheesy stuff that I like from the original saga. I don't know when things changed, when people thought that Star Wars was this deep character study and that this, this uh, brilliant twist and turn event all the time. There's fan theories all over the place about... You know, this person's a clone of this person, and this is happening. It's just, what what the hell? These, these movies were never complicated. They were always just kind of silly, dumb fun for the family. You had the Ewoks in the original trilogy. You have Jar Jar Binks in the, the follow-up movies. You got BB-8 and Porgs in this one. There, there's nothing here that's groundbreaking in terms of story. It's all just It's all just the technology. And from that aspect, things keep moving, things keep pushing new ground. And I'm, I'm absolutely blown away by some of the stuff I see in these films. It was really only Empire, and to a lesser extent, Return of the Jedi, that had these little gotcha moments. Everything else has just been kind of pretty straightforward, or the fans can kind of figure it out. Because it's, it's obvious by, by behind-the-scenes conversations, or, or leaked footage, or whatnot. But the end of the day, I like Star Wars because it's visually exciting. That it has a, a, a quick moving storyline with fun engaging characters and I can watch it with my family, sit back, not have to think a lot about what's going on, just watch lightsaber battles and space battles. I mean really, what, what more can we ask for? The prequels have plenty of that as well and I think that's why there's, there's many fans out there. I just didn't like the pacing, it was sluggish, I didn't like any of the characters outside of Obi-Wan. So I didn't have anybody to root for really, there, there wasn't really a central focused protagonist. You know, Anakin's just a little boy in the first one, he's, he's annoying and, and stupid. And then in the second one, he's this emo Hot Topic kid. And by the third one, I was already checked out. So even though that's easily the best of the three, I just, I, I, didn't, I didn't care at all. Which brings us to the J.J. Abram, Ryan Johnson, Kathleen Kennedy future Star Wars films. A lot of people, cynical people, like, you know, myself to a lesser extent, are like, okay, these are just for money and they're for profit and for merchandise. Well, yes. I mean, that's that's kind of Star Wars, right? Outside of the first and second movie, maybe. It's all just kind of that. Uh, the, the, the vision wasn't focused. That's for damn sure. There was no vision, as far as I could tell. Maybe J.J. Abrams had it in his head. Certainly didn't tell anybody about it. And then he handed the reins off to Ryan Johnson, who decided eight movies in. Let's flip the script. Let's make this a, a focused, deep dive into a character. Like Luke Skywalker, a guy that's been nothing more than just a, a goddamn moisture farmer kid who, who learned out his dad was amazing and he was amazing and he saved the day. That's his entire arc. He turned his dad good at the end. 
there's there's nothing complex to this character. He's he's like a Zorro. He, he's like a Superman. He's just all these these you know super simple archetypes that don't need any more thought put into them. It's okay to have a Captain America once in a while. Hell, Chris Evans' Captain America is one of my favorite characters in the MCU, and he started out the complete opposite. I found him more interesting by the fact that he was uh, willing to stand his ground for what was right. Anyway, I digress. There's enough complaining about The Last Jedi to fill in, you know, 7,000 more Star Wars movies. I don't need to do that. I've done that. Uh, not to the extent that some people do, but... I, I, I thought it was a beautiful film. I thought the sound was amazing. I thought visually, you know, Ryan Johnson knows how to set up a shot. He knows how to tell a story from a, a dynamic point of view, but not from a story point of view. That's all. The fact that, though... It's not even, I don't even blame Ryan Johnson so much as I just blame the vision in general or the lack there of one. Like, how do you give some, some freaking dude eight movies in just a free hall pass to do whatever the hell he wants? Like, here you go. Um, we have a couple loose notes that you could follow, but sh shit, do whatever you want, man. It's, it's your, it's your barbecue now. And so he's just like, okay, well, how about we, we just subvert everything. The stuff that was set up, let's knock it down. Let's really, let's really dig into it, you know? But we're going to end up in a dumber place by the end of it anyways. And that's where we get to where we're at now with Rise of Skywalker. A lot of critics, uh, keep in mind, I, I liked this movie for the reasons I've stated. I think it's, it's pretty obvious that the movie is two and a half hours long. It could have been four. It probably should have been four. It should have been two movies. Because what J.J. did is he he looked at The Last Jedi said, Nope, that's not even close to where I wanted to go with things. And it's clear from reactions from fans, not all, that that's not where they wanted things to go. So he he basically did a, did a hard reset. <laughs> ignored everything from The Last Jedi pretty much. And, and reshaped the narrative. So we have a full 35, 45 minutes of exposition, of cleanup of getting our characters moved along to a place where they should have been by the end of the second film. Now, there are so many haters out there. So many people that just absolutely hate this film. And that brings me to my like side rant that I've, I've talked about briefly on my second channel, one that you should absolutely subscribe to because I don't know what I'm doing on YouTube anymore. At one point I said, okay, my main channel is gonna be PG-13. It's gonna be all encompassing. It's gonna be the Star Wars of YouTube because I was being punished by YouTube for swearing, for being inappropriate, things like that. So I, I moved all my rants, my cringe series, which is a sat satirical show. People, not everybody understands that, so that was confusing too. And I moved on to my second channel, Adam Oinger. You should go there, subscribe. It's got a ton of fun stuff on there. I'm very proud of that one. That said, I, I, I did a poll recently on the U in the YouTube community, asked people what they wanted and they want the rants back here. So the Adam Rants movie series is coming back to the main channel. I don't know if I'm gonna pull those back over here or I'll just start, start anew, I guess. And it'll be just messy that way, but it is what it is. But let me get to my point. There is now a subset of people that pretend that they like movies that don't even go to the damn movies, but they have no problem putting out video after video complaining about said movie they won't even see. They'll do an hour video, two hour video, bashing the process, bashing the producers, bashing the directors, bashing the writers, bashing everything associated with the said film or property, and they won't even give it a chance. Now, it is so easy to do this. It is the lamest, sloppiest way you can go about making a channel. And people that don't have any sort of shits to give for the movie industry will do this day in day out they'll bash on the actors they'll bash on every, everything under the sun now i'm not above that i've put out 10 15 minute videos complaining about a video but that is not coming from a place of hate on the industry or these liberals or sjw's or whatever crap this this subset of youtubers does i do it because i paid money to see a movie i wanted to like and it sucked so I put out a video or two complaining about it because I'm trying to recoup my investment. I'm trying to recoup some of my sanity from it. Now, I don't put out a daily video bashing on Kathleen Kennedy or Ryan Johnson or the people that like those films. It's disgusting, it's shameful, and people that watch those channels should take a good look in the mirror. You are part of the problem and you are feeding into this culture that's disgusting. Go to movies, enjoy them, or don't go to movies and pretend you enjoy them. That's all it comes down to. 
And if you think that Hollywood's changed in such a way that they're, actually, they're not putting anything out worth your time, that's absolutely not true. I've seen so many good movies this year, it's ridiculous. Now let's get back into what I, the focus of this is. I just had to get that off of my dick for a second. Oh, there's that PG-13 thing going out the window already. If you wanted to dissect and make a meal out of the plot holes in Rise of Skywalker and all the things that don't add up, uh, you know, you wouldn't go hungry for weeks or months. There are plenty of issues. No, I don't think anybody, even people that like the movie would, would argue that. I, once more, am in it for the characters. When The Force Awakens came out, I really liked Rey, I really liked Finn, I really liked Poe, I liked BB-8. The old characters were back. I was on board. I liked uh, Kylo Ren. Interesting villain. He was cool. He had some. He had some depth to him. He had some struggle with the the, the light and dark. You, you know, we brought back Han Solo. People will complain that he was killed off and it was a disservice to his character. Really? Because Harrison Ford hated that character. He wanted to die off right away in the first movie, I believe, or right away in the second movie. He didn't give a crap about Han Solo. His story arc was done. You know, seeing him as a, uh, you know, revert back into a smuggler and a crappy dad, I could totally understand him doing that. I can get on board with that. That seems like his character. Um, Luke Skywalker, though, becoming a hermit, hating everybody in the forest, that one I couldn't get on board with. That's, that was the big problem. Anyway, so seeing the characters in The Rise of Skywalker back to their forms that they were at before... Finn isn't this bumbling idiot just kind of waffling through the whole film. He's back to being the, uh, the right-hand man with his boy Poe. They're bouncing dialogue. It's snappy. It's fun. They're with Ray. Ray's kicking ass. People call her a Mary Sue. This is a term I, didn't even, I wasn't even familiar with until the, first, uh, the Force Awakens came out. I, I defended her. Uh, you know, I was like, what? She can't just be good with the Force? I mean, she'll, she'll get trained. You know, she, she, she probably has a connection somewhere that we don't know about. Maybe she has a bloodline tie or, you know, who, who knows? There's lots of ways they can explain this away. And of course, The Last Jedi didn't. They said that she's just, you know, special and that, that gave them more fuel. Well, here we are now, sports fans. She's related to Palpatine. All right. Shut your mouths now. You can't, com com you can't complain anymore. It's been answered. She's like, she's got the blood of one of the most powerful Siths ever. Maybe the most powerful. I don't know. I, I don't read the, the, the comics or the play a lot of the video games or, or the tie-in TV shows and all that stuff. So maybe there's like 70 people more powerful. I don't even know if it's canon. Who cares? I'm here for the movies. Um, and, and, and in that regard, once again, Ray's a, Daisy Ridley is phenomenal as Ray. If you don't like her, fine. I don't know why though. I think she's just, she's, she's likable. She's charming. Yeah, she's a goody two-shoes. Once again, Captain America, Superman. I can have that. I'm cool with that. As long as you give them something to struggle with. Her having to struggle with her past and come to terms with it and come to terms with who she is, that's interesting to me. Saying she's no one and saying that there's really no conflict, that's boring. But giving her something to, to go after, something to strive for. And then her relationship with Kylo Ren, that I wasn't that interested previously, I thought worked really well here. So it's not all for loss in The Last Jedi. I, I don't ever want to watch that again, but there is some stuff brought over that was respected and I thought built upon. As for the complaints of Palpatine coming back, I mean, what do you, what, what do you want at this point? <laughs> what did you want? <laughs> Who cares is what I say. Uh, yeah, An Anakin or Darth Vader threw him down a hole and he, he died, he should have been dead. And I think there was even kind of hints, there was a, everything's so quick and so throwaway in this movie that you could take it a million different ways. I think he said at one point, I I've died and come back multiple times or something, I'm paraphrasing, uh, which you could then say, okay, this is like a Voldemort situation where he split his soul or he attached himself to another living thing out in space or just maybe to, to the Sith force itself. If that, I don't know, I don't know what that is. I don't really care. I just wanted a conflict for our characters. JJ provided one. Snoke was killed off. He didn't have another, he didn't have anything else to go on. He could have brought in another villain, but that wouldn't have made sense to build someone brand new up. He needed someone incredibly powerful to tell the story he wanted to tell. It's clear that he wanted Snoke to go all the way through this thing. That's what we're left with. This is, the, this is a mess for sure, but at least it's a exciting one. At least I see my characters back together again. And that's, at the end of the day, what I wanted. I think most people like Deathly Hallows and, and the Harry Potter franchise, and this really does kind of end that same way. 
you know, Ray can't do it alone. Like Harry Potter, she's been given a lot of convenient gifts along the way. She's been, uh, she's had a lot of help along the way, either with the Force or with just friends of hers. And then at the end, it, it's like the one-on-one -on -one showdown. Instead of two wands going at it, shooting out that little powerful magic shit, she's going at it with lightning. And she can't do it with one lightsaber, but oh look, she's got the other one from her buddy. And so then she can do it. And I almost was expecting the Force Ghost to uh, literally manifest around her. Get the, get the, you know, the Yoda tip of the hat, get Obi-Wan there, maybe Anakin. Have him just all around her like Harry had with the stone, where he brought back his family, the Ghost. And they said, we're with you. We're here. And they basically did that. They, they said, we're with you. All of us are inside of you. It's, it's, it's Avatar. It's Harry Potter. For some reason, people hate that. I don't... Isn't that kind of what the Force was? These ghosts just like randomly show up whenever they want, so you would assume that they are somehow connected with the individual who's who's one with the force, right? Carrie Fisher's back in this as Leia. I thought they handled that phenomenally well, as well as they possibly could have, considering she was no longer alive. I couldn't really tell how they did the things they did with her if she was shot in front of a green screen previously for most of it, so they were able to just like plop her in wherever, just puzzle piece her in. It, it worked though. She wasn't Mary poppins around, she wasn't punching asteroids or throwing planets. She was a grounded character. We had a fantastic scene that flashes back to her and Luke when they're younger, and he's training her to be the next badass, and so we get a little bit of a reasoning why she can fly through space and do some of that stuff. I mean, whatever, that was ridiculous, but it, it, it was, it was, I could have watched a whole movie of that, of them being young, him training her, and I would not be surprised if in another five to ten years, Disney goes back to this well again. I could go on for days and daisy about this thing, but I'm not. It comes down to this. If you like The Force Awakens, and you were soured by The Last Jedi, I really think this will bring you back. And if you like The Force Awakens, it's not because of the plot. It's not because they built the Death Planet, and they had, uh, they had the, the New Order, you know, come out of nowhere, and they basically retold A New Hope. The storyline, the plot, isn't the issue. It isn't the thing people loved about it. It was the fact that we had new engaging characters and that magic was back. If you hated The Last Jedi, it's because these characters were broken apart from each other, they were dissected, they reverted, they weren't the same people. And then there was that whole layer of crap piled on with you know, the, the, the men are all idiots and the women are all strong and powerful. It was just so force-fed. There is some of that for sure in Hollywood, so I get some of that pain. I can see it too. But it's not to the point of movies are broken. Movies, it's over. It's all over. It's absurd. If you like The Last Jedi, then you go into this one. I've, I've heard people on both sides. Some people really enjoy it still because I think... I think there is a large swath of people that I know, real people, not these internet idiots, that just want to go to a movie and escape. They want to watch, enjoy, and appreciate the story that was told by these writers and directors and actors. They're not looking at it from a... They're not, they're not dissecting the pieces, right? They're not this in, intellectual being, you know, as these guys claim to be, where they're, they're breaking down why a ship is still working all these years later, or why there's horses running on the outside of a ship in space. It, it doesn't have to make sense as long as it's compelling. And my final thought on this is, you can hate this film all you want, you have absolutely every right to hate it, and to hate what they did to some of these old, old school characters. I myself can't stand how they treated Luke. But you have to at least see the damn movie in order to really knock it. And you just do a daily piggyback off of their success to prop yourself up, your channel up, and to make yourself sound smarter than everyone else. It's pathetic. It's embarrassing, and you should feel ashamed. But I don't think these types of people feel shame. They just they just make their money and they, they walk on to the next product. Those are my takes. I apologize if you came here hoping that I would tear this movie a new one. I legitimately had fun with it, and I'm not going to lie and pretend I'm outraged just to, to make some people happy.